Okay, in this video we're going to do the first problem in problem set 5. So it's a chapter 9 problem. Let's see what it is. Problem 1. An insurance company has the business objective of reducing the amount of time it takes to approve applications for life insurance. The approval process consists of underwriting, which includes a review of the application, a medical information bureau check, possible requests for additional medical information and medical exams, and a policy compilation stage in which the policy pages are generated and sent to the bank for delivery. The ability to deliver approved policies to customers in a timely manner is critical to the profitability of this service. During a period of one month, a random sample of 27 approved policies is selected, and the total processing time, in days, is recorded and stored in the insurance.xls spreadsheet. Okay, the insurance.xls spreadsheet looks like this. And there's some times here. It looks like there's about 27 times. So let's see what's first. Question A. In the past, the mean processing time was 45 days. At the 0.05 level of significance, is there evidence that the mean processing time has changed from 45 days? Make sure you state the hypotheses and how confident you are in the alternative hypothesis. Okay, so um, uh, let's look at the spreadsheet again. Uh, let's see, the hypothesis hypotheses would be let's uh, uh, the the hypothesis is that the mean is. Uh, 45 days. That's the null hypothesis, and the um, so the the mean population is uh, the mean of the population processing time is 45 days, and so the alter the alternative hypothesis is um, is that the mean is not equal to 45 days. So to uh, to solve this problem, we can use pH stat. Uh, so to use PHStat, we click on uh, Add-ins, PHStat, and we're looking at one sample tests, uh, T test for the mean, because we don't know sigma, and this thing pops up. And so our null hypothesis is 45, and the level of significance is 0 0.05. And uh, the sample statistics unknown, we can click here and just enter them in, A1 through A28. And we want a two-tailed test. And let's click OK and see what comes up. And so uh, here we see that we do not reject that null hypothesis. Um, and uh, mean we have a p-value of 0.82, which is um, much larger than this level of significance, and so we don't reject the, the t-statistic is point z uh, minus 0 0.22, and the critical values are uh, much lower than that on the lower end and much higher than that on the upper end. So it, that's uh, so again we do not reject okay um, question B what assumption about the population distribution is needed in order to conduct the t-test in question a uh, well the assumption is that the sample is normally distributed so let's, what's it, what is C here? Question C, construct a box plot or a normal probability plot to evaluate the assumption made in question B. Okay, so uh, box plot or normality plot, that's one way we can do it. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and create that for the sample here. Let's go back to the data, and we can go to pH stat, and go to probability and probability distributions, and select normal probability plot and this thing pops up and we can um, uh, select all this data here click here and select the whole column and click OK and this thing pops up and it's a nice normal probability plot here 
So we can see that it looks a little right skewed here, which may suggest that it's not normal. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, create. Uh, let's let's see what else did they say? We could, oh, box plot. Let's see what a box plot looks like. Uh, go back to the data and uh, add in pH stat uh, box plot, and this thing pops up. And so we can look at this. And this is a single group variable. And uh, oh, here it is. And uh, yeah, we can see that uh, it doesn't really look, looks skewed to the left, I think. Uh, that doesn't look very normal. Um, so we may conclude that it's not normal, but uh, I'd like to do one more thing, and that's uh, check out the descriptive statistics. And we can just do, use the data analysis tool here and um, select the data. And um, put the output here. And let's look at the summary statistics. And when we click OK, we see that oops, that the skewness and pertosis are actually both between minus one and one. So uh, for question C here. Um, when we do use the box plot or the normality or the normal probability plot, it doesn't look like it's normal, but if we, when we look at skewness and kurtosis, uh, it does look normal. So uh, you can probably report either one for that one, uh, depending on uh, what how you support your your conclusion. So uh, question D. Here, do you think that the assumption needed in order to conduct the t-test in question is valid? Explain. Uh, well, um, if we do look at if we do use the box plot, uh, it does it uh, doesn't look very normal when we look at the the normal probability plot. It doesn't look very normal. However, when we look at the uh, skewness and kurtosis, it 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 may be normal. Let's uh, so I would probably conclude. Uh, let's see. According to the According to the normality plot, it looks not normal, so the assumption made in, in B is invalid. However, the skewness and kurtosis are both within minus 1 and 1, so by, a measure, by that measure, the data is normal. Hence, the assumption made in B would be valid. So you can uh, answer either way as long as you uh, support it with the right data. Okay, that's problem one.